Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD EXB 132AR-K 4K HDMI Media Extender Kit. This product was engineered to make it very simple for you to share any HDMI media source with a second location up to 40 meters away in full 4K ultra high definition resolution or up to 70 meters away in full HD 1080p resolution over a single Cat 5e or Cat 6 cable. The product features audio extraction capabilities, which will strip the audio from the media stream you're sharing and allow you to pass that along to a home audio system for that full theater experience. The product also features power over cable technology, which means you can use a single power supply at the primary or secondary location, and that will provide all the power you need to operate both modules, which greatly simplifies your wiring. Also included with the kit are a set of infrared blasters that will capture the remote control signals at that secondary location and pass those back over that same LAN cable to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you all the components that are included with the kit. Then I'll take a closer look at each of those components and explain exactly what they do. I'll list the audio and video standards the product can support, and then I'll come back and actually install the product here to show you just how simple it'll be to use with your own equipment. Now let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open the box, you'll find a center module, a receiver module, a single power supply that can be used at the primary or secondary location, a set of brackets that can be used to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way. There are two infrared blaster kits, a receiver and a transmitter. They also come with sticky pads where you can use those to attach them to the media equipment you have. You also get two little RS-232 connection blocks. The unit will transmit RS-232 connection signals over that same LAN cable as well. And then finally, a full instruction manual, which has connection diagrams, specifications for the unit, and shows you everything you need to know to get it working with your own equipment. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'll take a closer look at each of the components and explain what they do, and then I'll list the audio and video standards that the product can support. Included with the kit is the sender module, receiver module, a set of brackets that can be used to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way, two sets of infrared blasters, connection blocks for RS-232 connections on the back of the unit, a power supply that can be used with either of the modules, and because it's employing power over cable, it'll provide enough power to operate both modules with just a single power supply. This end plugs into the wall, the other end has a barrel connection on it which plugs into the back of either module. And then finally, also included is a full instruction manual that lists connection diagrams, specifications, and all the information you'll need to understand exactly how to use this product once you get it home. Now we'll take a closer look at both of the modules, and we'll start with the sender unit. Both of these modules feature full metal enclosures, which make them extremely durable, and it also helps to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the electronics inside. On the front of the sender module, starting on the left, you'll find three LED indicators, power, ARC, and SPDIF. When you first add power to the module, or if you add power to the remote module and make a network connection between them, the unit will start a power on self-test, and when it's finished and passed that test, it'll light the power indicator, letting you know it's ready to go. To the right of that is an ARC indicator. If you enable that function, that will illuminate. And the product provides audio extraction capabilities, and you have the choice between analog or digital output. If you choose digital audio output, this will illuminate once you make a connection to your audio equipment. This switch allows you to choose between analog and digital output. Tap it once, it'll move to analog. Tap it again, it'll move back to digital. To the right of that is a service port. It's a standard micro USB connection, and that's used for pushing firmware to the unit if needed later on to update features. And to use that, you'll connect up a short cable, micro USB here, to a USB A to your computer, push the firmware to the unit, and affect the update. On the rear of the unit are a series of ports. On the left, you'll see an RS-232 port. This unit can also transmit RS-232 signals over that same LAN connection. So if you're gonna use that function, you can use the included port connectors to make wiring easy. To the right of that are two audio output ports, digital and analog. This is the SPDIF port. If you connect this up through digital audio, the SPDIF indicator will light up. The left and right audio output is a standard three and a half millimeter connection for easy connection to an external amplifier. To the right of that are two more three and a half millimeter ports, IR out and IR in. These are used with the infrared blaster kits that come with the product so you can control the media you're watching remotely. To the right of that is the HDMI input port, and that's connected up to your media device that you're gonna actually share with the secondary location, standard HDMI connection there. This is a standard LAN connection, and that's the cable that you'll connect between this unit and the receiver unit downfield. 
And then finally, there's the power supply connection over here. It's a standard barrel connection. You can connect the power supply up to this module or to the remote module. And when you make that LAN connection, both modules will have all the power they need with a single power supply. The connections and indicators on the receiver unit are very similar. On the front of the receiver, you'll find three LEDs, power, ARC, and SPDIF. When you add power to the module, or if you add power to the other module and make the network connection between them, the unit will start and finish the self-test. Once it's passed that test, it'll light this LED, letting you know it's ready to use. To the right of that is the ARC indicator. If you've enabled ARC, that will come on. To the right of that is the SPDIF, letting you know you're in digital audio mode. The switch here switches between analog and digital audio. And to the right is the service port, again, that's used for pushing firmware to the unit if needed to update features later on. On the rear of the unit, standard port connections, RS-232. If you're going to use those control signals and pass those over the same LAN connection, that's where you'll make the connection. To the right of that is digital audio input, SPDIF input. To the right of that are two IR connections, IR out and IR in, and that's used with the set of infrared blasters. And it's really important that you connect up the receiver here and the transmitter there, and they're labeled as such. To the right of that is your HDMI output port. That's connected to your display device. And again, it's a standard HDMI connection here to whatever display device you're using. This is your LAN connection. That's where the other end of the cable from the sender unit plugs in. And you've got an option to plug your power supply in here with the 24 volt port. And you'll slide that barrel connector in and then just finger tighten the collar so it doesn't pop out. You'll also notice there are venting on both sides of the unit, and that's to keep the electronics inside at a comfortable temperature. And on the bottom of the unit, you'll notice holes on either side that can be used with the included brackets to mount this module up off the ground and out of the way, as well as more vent holes on the bottom to let any hot air that accumulates inside the unit during operation evacuate. The O-Ray UHD EXB 132AR-K supports a wide range of media devices, including computers, game systems, streaming media devices, DVD players, and cable boxes. The product supports video resolutions up to 4K. It is both DVI 1.0 and HDCP 1.X through 2.2 compliant. Its audio profile support includes Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Digital EX, Dolby True HD, DTS EX, and DTS Master Audio. It includes a set of infrared blasters for remote control of the media you're enjoying, as well as supporting POC to simplify cabling. Now I'll show you just how simple it'll be to use this product with your own equipment. For this demonstration, this side of the table represents the primary location where you're enjoying the media content today that you'd like to send to the remote location. This side of the table represents that secondary location where you'd like to enjoy that content. I've got a small media player set up right there that's looping a video, and I've got it connected to this monitor just to show you the video looping. Over here, I've set up a secondary monitor where I'm going to enjoy that content. Now, I've got the sender module here and the receiver module here. The first set of connections I'll make are to the sender module, and I'll start with the media content. I'll disconnect that from the monitor. Again, a standard HDMI connection, and that goes to the HDMI input port in the back of the sender module. Now, I'll connect up the monitor on the receiver. Got another HDMI cable here, and that connects up to the HDMI output port on the receiver. Now I'll add power to the sender module. I've already plugged the power supply in. All I have to do is slide this barrel connector into the power port, and I'll finger tighten the collar just so it doesn't slip out. Now the minute I add power to the sender module, it starts what's called a power on self test, where it's checking all the internal electronics to make sure they're working okay. It's also checking the resolution of the media source to make whatever adjustments are needed before it transmits it to the secondary location to give you the best possible picture. Now the only thing I'm missing at this point is the network connection between them. And you can use a long cable with this, but I'm going to use a short one because we're a little tight on desk space here. I've got a short cable that I'll plug into the sender module the LAN connection on the back. And then once I've made that connection, the other end of it connects to the LAN connection on the back of the receiver module. Now, because this product uses power over cable, the minute I connect that up, the power supply will send enough energy to that secondary module to provide all the power it needs to operate. And the minute it sees that power connected, it starts a power on self-test as well, checking all the internal electronics. It's checking the resolution of the monitor. And again, it's making whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture. And there you go. It really is just that simple to get it working. I hope you found this overview of the UHD EXP 132AR-K 4K HDMI Media Extender Kit helpful. It really does provide a very simple way of sharing any of your HDMI media content with a second location up to 40 meters away in a full 4K ultra high definition resolution, or even further to 70 meters away in a full HD 1080p resolution. 
The product features power over cable capabilities, which greatly simplifies the installation, and its audio extraction capabilities that allow you to pass the audio to a home stereo system will deliver that full theater experience. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks again for watching.